What is going on guys? Welcome back to Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about B trees, which are also self-balancing trees. And up until now, we've talked about binary search trees and uh, AVL trees that are also self-balancing. And um, the reason we introduce B trees is because when we get to big data sets uh, or big, big sets of data, we usually don't save these in the RAM. So the access time is uh, much, much longer because the random access memory, of course, is way faster than uh, the external storage meter that we save these big data sets on. Um, and also these external storage media usually have a block oriented structure, which means that when you access one thing, you access the full block, not just one individual element, but you access the full block. And because of that, it makes sense to come up with a kind of tree structure that allows you to uh, store information in blocks and thus limit the height of the tree. Because when you limit the height of the tree and you can still uh, do all the operations in logarithmic time, it's not only logarithmic runtime complexity, which is already very good, but you also have a very, very small height, which means that the logarithmic uh, or the logarithm of the elements is actually very small. So you don't only have a very efficient runtime complexity, but you also have very few levels that you can uh, navigate to. And this is a very good thing because uh, because of that, we limit the amount that we have, uh, the amount of times that we have to access data uh, or we have to, to ask left or right, for example, or left, right, or middle, for example. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about bee trees. So let us get right into it. So now let us look at this example of a bee tree here. We're not going to talk about the formal definitions, the exact formal definitions too much. We're just going to take a look at what a bee tree has to be kind of. And then we're going to talk about how to rebalance it, how to insert elements, find elements and so on. Now, every B tree has a certain order and this order in this case is three. So M is the variable for the order. In this case, we have a B tree of order three. Uh, and this means that we can have a maximum of M child nodes. Now, in this case, you can see uh, of three child nodes, sorry. Um, in this case, you can see here we have three child nodes. We have, so th this thing here is one node, one block. Uh, and this one block here can have three children as a maximum. But at the same time, it has to have m divided by two and the result sealed. So uh, rounded up uh, child nodes as a minimum. So except for the root node example, uh, for example, the root node has to have a minimum of two children. The root node has to have a minimum of two children, but all the other nodes, except for the leaf nodes, of course, um, have to be I uh, have to have a, a minimum of m divided by two and the result sealed child nodes. In this case, three divided by two is 1.5 and 1.5 sealed is two. So we'd have a minimum of two child nodes. Um, what does that mean? This means that if we are below the minimum or above the maximum, we have to open up a new level. We have to reshift values. We have to rebalance the tree, adjust uh, the structure so that we can fulfill this property. Also, the amount of child nodes has always to be larger than the amount of keys. So if I have two keys here, I have three child nodes. If I have one key, I have two child nodes. If I would have a B tree of order six or something, and I have five keys, I would have to have six child nodes and so on. So this is another rule that has to be fulfilled when we're talking about B trees. And one rule that's also very important is uh, all the leaf nodes are at the same level. The leaf nodes are at the same level, which means that we cannot have um, a bunch of them here. And then, you know, I mean, it doesn't make sense anyway now, but I cannot just go ahead and open up this here as a new level. And then I have some leaf trees here, um, uh, leaf nodes, sorry, leaf nodes here, and then some leaf nodes here. All the leaf nodes have to be at the same height, at the same level. And those are basically the criteria for a B tree. And once these criteria or as soon as these criteria are not fulfilled anymore, we need to rebalance, restructure uh, and do something about it. So let us go ahead and try to insert a new element and unbalance the tree or violate these criteria to see what happens. Now, let me just delete this real quick. And what we're trying to do now is we're going to add the element AD to the B tree and see what happens and see how we can rebalance it. Now, if you want to add the element 80, I go to the root node, it's 25. So I need to go to the right, then we have 37, 44, uh, uh, 45, sorry, 80 is larger than 37. So we're not going to the left. It's also not in between 37 and 45, because uh, then we would have to go down here. That's not the case. 
uh, but it's larger than 45. So we need to go to the right. And then we have those two keys here. So we have 67, 77, and um, actually would have to go to the right. But since we're at the leaf level, we just append it here into the same block and see what happens. Now, the problem is that we have a block of three with three keys, which is not allowed because we have the order three, which means that the maximum amount of keys is two because the child notes has always uh, always have to be larger than the keys and the keys cannot be larger than two if the child notes have a maximum of three or are a maximum of three. So what we need to do now is we need to adjust. So what we do is we uh, shift up the center value one level, uh, shift it up one level. Yes. So what we do is we essentially say by 77 and we shift it up uh, into this level here. So actually, let me just delete a bunch of things here so that it doesn't look too messy. We just delete this. Uh, so actually 77 is removed from this leaf level here. And what we would do next is I'm also going to delete the 80 here and rewrite it. So now we have 80 down here and we have 77 up here. Uh, but now we have the same problem here because um, here we also have three keys. And of course, you know what I could do is I could say, okay, then we have 80 because obviously we need to do it like that or something. But that doesn't make sense because we are not going to leave 77 here because we have a B tree of order three. So what we do here next is we shift up the center value again. And what happens then is we shift up 45 into the root node. Um, and then essentially what happens is we remove it and we essentially replace it by 77. Uh, we replace the position by 77 with 77. And I'm not sure what number it was 45. Uh, I think it was 45. And then we end up with this year. And because we end up with this year, we have two keys and three child nodes. We cannot just have two child nodes and two keys. We need to um, say the middle points to 37 and the right points to 77. So let me maybe again clear this up a little bit here so that we don't have it too messy. Um, we're just going to delete these red arrows here and redraw the 45. So what we will do is we would say, okay, these are now separate blocks. So again, we're going to split them like that. And we have 37 here and 77 here. And then we connect those two. And then we say, okay, to the right, you have 80 to the right, you, uh, to the left, you have uh, 67. So essentially, you also split these two notes here. Come on, don't do any dumb shit here. We have 80 here and 67 to the left. It's not the most beautiful tree that you can draw. But that's essentially what you do when you enter an element and the structure uh, violates the criteria you shift up the center element because we had three keys at the leaf level so we shifted up the center key then we had three keys at one level above that we had to shift the center key again and now everything's fine because we have two keys that's okay in a uh, b tree of order three we have uh, a balanced structure here we can find elements in logarithmic runtime complexity it's not a problem and all these um, criteria are still uh, satisfied and met Remember, we had the leaf nodes, leaf nodes, same level, leaf nodes had to be at the same level, level, uh, and all these, um, all this criteria here is satisfied. So the B tree is rebalanced. Now let's look at what happens when we delete elements and violate the criteria. What happens then is, um, I mean, it depends on what kind of deletion you perform because in B trees, you have many different scenarios for insertion and deletion. My recommendation to you is if you want to get a basic understanding of what's happening or not a basic, but a deep understanding of what's happening, I would recommend going online and typing B tree simulator into Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever and uh, play around with it a little bit because reading the formal definitions, you know, you can learn it, you can memorize everything, but I think you'll get more of an intuition by playing around with a simulator, with a visualization tool. Uh, you can also additionally uh, go to a textbook and read all these definitions there, but I think they're going to confuse you more than just playing around with the simulator. Uh, but essentially, you know, if you delete a read, uh, if you delete a leaf node, what happens is you essentially just rotate so that the missing place gets filled up. So in this case, if we delete 22, for example, what would happen is we would, of course, delete 22. And then the obvious thing to do here is you just have to rotate so that 15 ends up at that position here. 
and you shift 11. So you shift 11 up here and 15 down here and you'll rotate basically in similar way to uh, the AVL tree rotation so that you end up with four at the left side and 15 on the right side. And in general, it's 11 up here. So that's a single rotation, a very simple rotation if we delete a re uh, if you delete a leaf node. Now, what happens when we delete a node in between and a level in between? Uh, this is a little bit more complicated, but it's still very similar to the AVL rotation. So if we delete 15, for example, what happens now is we rotate the whole tree. So we say this is a rotation here. And what happens is we have 25 here now. Um, and we replace 25 by 37. But then we need an additional, um, so we say 37. But then of course we need an additional uh, rotation here because now we have, uh, we have this node here removed and we have only one key at this level on the right side. And because of that, of course, we cannot have three children here, but it would also not be correct to just take 35 and put it into the same block uh, as 43 because 35 is actually less than 37 and cannot be on the right side. So what we do is we actually combine these two blocks here. So actually 35 and 22 are combined. So 35 and 22 are combined. And that's how you rebalance the tree in an AVL like way. So you essentially just rotate the way uh, that you need to rotate in order to fill up the empty slots. And then you um, make sure that the individual elements are on the right side, uh, like not on the right side, but on the correct side. Um, and as I said, if you want to get a real good feeling about this, a really good intuition about this, I would recommend playing around with a visualization tool. Uh, there are a lot of visualization tools for B trees online. Uh, because as I said, I don't see a lot of value in reading the exact definitions unless you want to program an algorithm uh, with it or something like that. But in order to understand what B trees actually does and how they balance them, rebalance themselves and so on, I think it's enough to just play around with the simulation tool. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about why this is possible in logarithmic time again, uh, obviously, because the rotations in the same way that it was true for the AVL trees, uh, we're not going to have more rotations than there are levels, um, or at least not significantly more. So we'll end up with logarithmic runtime complexity. And also when we have uh, when we add elements, we need to shift up, shift up, shift up, and so on. But we cannot shift up more times than there are levels, because then of course, we would be above the root node and this doesn't make sense. So all these operations, finding elements, adding elements, inserting elements, um, removing elements or rebalancing the tree, everything is possible in logarithmic time. But B trees have the additional advantage that we have data saved in blocks. And because we have more data uh, in one node in one block, we have less, um, less many times, uh, we, we need to access less many times. And this is very beneficial when it comes to external storage media with a block like structure or block oriented structure. So last but not least, we're going to talk about B star trees, which are a little bit special, because all the nodes in between here, all the values in between here are just used for navigation. Now the B star tree has the property that all its elements, all its actual values that we're interested in, are leaf nodes. We don't have any value that we're interested in that is not a leaf node. All these values here are just values that are guiding us, that are navigating us towards these values that we're actually interested in. So 3, 8, 14, 27 are just values to tell us you need to go left, you need to go right, you need to go to the center and so on. They're not values themselves that we're interested in. Now, um, this is essentially what a B star tree is. And uh, this, this number here, the, the value of the navigation key is always the largest element of its uh, left child. So in this case, you know, you have three because three is the largest element of its left child tree, uh, the actual element, we're not talking about navigation elements. Um, five is five because it's the largest element of this left subtree. Eight is eight because it's the largest element of the left subtree. 14 is 14 because it's the largest element of its left subtree. 18 because 18 left subtree. 27 because 27 and so on. So it's always like that. And this is the pattern here. We always have these in between layers in order to navigate. Um, and the amount of actually the amount of elements that we can store at the leaf level is determined by a so called K star parameter. And this K star parameter, let's say it's two in this case, uh, means that we can have from K star 
up until two K star um, elements at the leaf level. So you can have a minimum of two or uh, a maximum of four. So two, three or four elements at uh, the last leaf level. You cannot have less than those. You cannot have, uh, you cannot have more than those because if you have more or less, we're going to restructure the whole tree. We're going to add an additional level or we're going to remove a level and restructure everything so that it uh, still fulfills this criteria. Notice, however, that this parameter here is different from the M parameter from the order of the tree. The order of the tree is still three here. So it's an ordinary B tree, but we have the property that in the leaf level, we can store two to four um, elements per node. So this is essentially what a B tree is, uh, a B star tree is. Uh, a B tree where we have essentially all the layers in between are just used for navigation and all the actual data is stored at the last level, at the leaf node level. So that's it for today's video. We now talked about B trees and B star trees. B star trees usually have a smaller height than B trees because you know you only need the navigation tools and all the data is stored in large blocks at the leaf level. So you have a smaller size, a smaller height of the tree. Um, and you know, for now we're done with the algorithms and data structures tutorial series for beginner. Uh, for beginners, there are actually more topics that we could cover here. Um, but I want to focus more again on Python projects, on AI projects. It was a, uh, an interesting tutorial series and I know that a lot of you enjoyed it and it was very popular in the beginning. Uh, the more advanced topic got less views because probably they're either too complex or not too interesting to a lot of you guys. Um, if there is enough demand and if I notice that there is interest in more advanced topics like P problems, NP problems, NP complete problems, all these dynamic programming issues and so on. Um, if there is demand for that and if I see that people are interested in it, I might make some more videos. But for now, this algorithms and data structures tutorial series for beginners is done. If you have any questions, you can leave them in a the comment section down below. If you like this video or the whole series, you can leave a like and let me know in a comment section by writing a comment about that. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel in order to see more future videos for free. We're going to do a lot more Python now again, a lot more projects, a lot more networking, AI and so on. Um, so we're going to get back to the old, uh, kind of videos here. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.